Welcome to worship here at Old Stonewall Farm, home of me, the accidental country pastor. Well, we are in the season of Epiphany. And as I mentioned to you last week, that I like to make Epiphany an entire season, extending from January 6th, which is the official feast day that is on the calendar for the celebration of Epiphany, and taking it all the way to Ash Wednesday. I like to extend Epiphany and make it a season because I like to use those weeks leading up to Ash Wednesday as reminders or as a challenge, an Epiphany challenge for us all to see, to see Christ among us. For the word Epiphany comes from the Greek word meaning manifestation. So how is Christ manifesting himself in the world, in our lives? So I'd like to challenge us from now until Ash Wednesday to see those epiphany moments, to see Christ. Because if Advent and Christmas time was about the promise of Emmanuel, God with us, I see epiphany as being Christ among us. So we go from God with us, that promise that we were, were given this gift of Christ, but now it's time now it's time to see Christ among us. So each week, starting today, I will open us in a time of reflection and time of sharing God's word together. I wanna to open us in this time with us all taking a deep breath, as I always say, a deep breath to center ourselves, to really clear out everything that might crowd the divine and to really fully be present to God. But starting today and the weeks to come, in addition to just centering ourselves and having a time to breathe and really open our hearts to receive God's word, I'm going to ask you in this time to reflect on the past week and reflect on how it was, where it was, that you have seen Christ among you. Where were your epiphany moments? So every week I want us to, to really think about it and really open our eyes to the fact that God, God is always at work. But sometimes we just get so caught up with our lives that we forget that. So that's why I like to make epiphany an entire season because if we just use it for one day, January 6th, then it becomes more of something that we just commemorate. But I really want us to live into epiphany, Christ now among us. So today we will begin with that reflection and then we'll head into our scripture, which takes us to Jesus's baptism. And it will be a reminder how much we need those, those cleansing waters if we are truly, truly are going to be God's new creations, if we are truly going to be the children of God that God calls us to be, if we are really going to be able then to hear what Jesus heard in that moment of that baptism when the heavens opened up and a voice said, this is my beloved. So this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us begin now our journey through the season of Epiphany by thinking now, where was it these last few days that I was able to see Christ at work in my life? Well, I am going to head down to the stream and get some more water for the wash tub in this old dry sink that I have here. Because also later on, we will have an opportunity to renew our baptismal vows. And so let us begin our time of worship.
John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. Well, I don't know about you, but uh, this week, the first full week of 2021, has been a hard one. And I know that as we entered into a new year, a lot of us, we were saying this year will be better. And well, as the first few days of the new year unfolded, we realized that we are still in I want to say we're still in a fight between good and evil, between light and dark. I really wanted to do a, a special time together on, on Wednesday on the Feast of Epiphany, January 6th. And I had it all planned out and one thing just got in the way of another and I didn't get around to doing it. And I felt kind of badly about it, but then that afternoon, as the images of our capital being stormed, I I just sat there in disbelief. I sat there with a lot of heartache, a lot of tears, and then I realized I, I'm so glad that I didn't put together something for Epiphany because it would have just not addressed everything that needs to be addressed. I mentioned to you that Epiphany is a celebration of when Christ became known to others, especially outsiders, not to his own people, but the, the Gentiles. And in the, the Western church, we like to use the celebration of Epiphany. We tend to focus on the, the Magi. We tend to focus on the Matthew 2 scripture, uh, second chapter, verses 1 through 12, when uh, the star emerges and these, these magi, these wise men, possibly astrologers from foreign lands come, they follow the star, and they wind up in Jerusalem and they ask Herod, who is a ruthless dictator, um, they ask Herod about the star because they said, you know, the star... Um, a new star in the sky is so bright, it signifies that a new king, a new ruler has come into the world. And so the, the Western church, we tend to lift up the celebration of Epiphany as being the three kings day, the time that they, they finally followed the star, they found Jesus, and they presented the gifts to him. And... And then the story continues on that, that Herod said, okay, you know, when you find Jesus, come back and report back to me and let me know because I want to also pay this new king um, homage, you know, respect, which is a lie. We know that. And the Magi, they were warned in a dream not to return back to Herod, not to tell Herod at all um, about where Jesus was. And they were told to return to their homeland by a different route. And Herod, Herod, as I said, is a ruthless dictator, ruthless ruler. He's just vicious. 
when he hears that there is a new king in this world, he gets scared. He, he gets scared of losing power. And he does the most atrocious thing that that we hear right after Christmas sometimes if pastors want to delve into that scripture lesson we hear about the these the slaughter of the innocents when Herod says just kill every baby boy under the age of two or three just slaughter them because if this new king is is a child that has come into the world and I don't know yet who who it is that I'm not taking any chances and just slaughter them all. Well, January 6th came and I was thinking a lot about Epiphany and I was gonna put together something for a time to worship. I was gonna invite you to have a cup of coffee with me and, and perhaps share some of the remaining Christmas cookies that I had on a plate and just celebrate Epiphany, you know, when these wise men found Jesus. But then my mom called that afternoon and told me to watch the news. And when I saw our capital just being overtaken, being stormed, and again, I, 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 couldn't, kind of, I, I couldn't comprehend what was happening. But as I sat there, I, I realized for the first time in my life that the Epiphany scripture, the slaughter of the innocents, the extremes that a, a weak, ruthless dictator will take to hold on to power, I was witnessing it. And as I sat there some more, I, I thought, this is indeed our epiphany moment. This is indeed a God moment. For me, it was that what happened, happened in Washington, DC happened on epiphany. If that ever was a message for us to heed, I, I don't know what, what would be, what would it take us to open up our eyes? For me, that was, that was epiphany. It was the moment in which I felt God was saying, see, see, see what is happening in the world. See, see. And then look to see where Christ is among us. It's been very hard to see where Christ is among us. I'm still sifting through it, but, but Christ is among us. And if anything, this epiphany that we have experienced together, it was a, a moment in which we needed to open up our eyes. The light, the light was shining so brightly, revealing the darkness. And I think that's why people, so many people miss that bright star so many years ago, the star of Bethlehem that was shining in the sky and, and announcing that there is a new king, an, an amazing king in the world. I think that's why a lot of people missed it. Okay, let me take that back. They didn't miss it. They didn't miss it. I think they chose to ignore it because what does light do? Light reveals what we can't see. If you can't see in the dark, flip on a switch, a light. And then you can see what you need to see. Well, the light of Christ, epiphany, the light of Christ, Christ being manifest is now Christ among us, with us. That light is powerful and it will reveal, the light of Christ will reveal all the darkness, all the, the sin and the evil, all, all the things that are ugly, that we choose to, to hide in the dark, that we don't want people to see, well, the light of Christ will shine and reveal what we hide in the shadows of our heart. Epiphany, January 6, 2021, was that moment in which 
the Christ light shone brightly and illuminated who we really are and the work that needs to be done. Now you're saying who we are. Oh, that's not me. I, I, I'm not, I, I, I disagree with everything that, that happened, those people. And, you know, we could go back and forth and, and saying, you know, I'm not part of this, but, but we all are. We all are part of the brokenness in the world and we all are being called to be part of the healing of the world. For this to happen on Epiphany, the storming of our capital, it, it, there was just so many, so many messages that I was thinking about what God was trying to say. First of all, a, a, a weak, fearful dictator that lashes out with, with anger and, and violence. No, it wasn't the slaughter of the innocents, but man, it was the slaughter of democracy. And then, and then if we were to take the wise men, the Matthew story, and just say that then they were warned to turn to their homelands going by another path. Well, for me, that was a message that starting today, I need to live my life differently. I need to go on a different path if I am to be one of the healers of this broken world. I need to venture on a different path than I'm, what I'm already on. Maybe be more vocal in, in speaking up about white supremacy. I mean, I live in Vermont. I live in a white community. I serve a white church. And if I want to keep my job, then I better not mention white supremacy. So the Epiphany scripture in Matthew, if the Magi returned to their country land, their homeland by another path, that means that they were changed and they, they were being invited to be more of the change in the world, to go a different route, to see, they, 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 they saw Christ for who he, he really was, God incarnate. They saw that and now it was time to go and be changed by it, return on a different route, a different perspective, see things differently, act differently. And then today for the season of Epiphany, our scripture lesson, well, in Genesis, we have, we have the, the passage in Genesis that I always overlook because it just seems so boring. It's like, it's creation story. In the beginning, God created, you know, heaven and earth in, in the beginning. And, and, and the Genesis starts in the beginning when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep. So basically what we are being told that in the beginning, it was just a void and, and it was chaos. It was chaos swirling around. And, 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 and to bring order into that chaos, what is the first thing that God said? The first thing that God said, the first thing that God did to bring order out of chaos, he said, let there be light. Let there be light. So our scripture for today takes us to Genesis 1. And it's just the creation story, but I see it in a new way. My eyes are open. I had an epiphany that out of the chaos, the first thing that God did to bring about order was to say, let there be light. And so in our chaotic world, if we are to be a new creation, then we have to say, let there be light. Let there be God's light shining. Let there be Christ's light illuminating. Let the light in our hearts shine forth. The other scripture lesson for today is, is from Mark, and we have Jesus being baptized. Now, as I said, in the Western church, we tend to um, observe Epiphany by focusing in on the wise men and the Matthew scripture. But in the Eastern tradition, Epiphany is marked by the reading of Jesus's baptism. That moment that Jesus the Christ was made known through the waters of baptism, when, when the people that were gathered around the Jordan, the banks of the Jordan, 
and all of a sudden the, the skies opened up and a voice said, this is my beloved. Jesus the Christ became known, was revealed. His mission, his ministry was made manifest. It, it was to begin. And it began through the waters of baptism. So I thought about that a lot today, the waters of baptism. As I read the Mark scripture, you know, everybody from the Judean countryside, they were coming to be baptized by John. And they had to travel a long way. Some came, you know, close by, but others, they were, they, they really had to be intentional in getting to the waters of baptism. And then when they get there, they, they, they prayed. They were praying and they were confessing their sins. Before they were baptized, they had to confess their sins. Now, baptism didn't begin with John or, or Jesus. That the act of baptism wasn't just a brand new thing that started to happen on the banks of the Jordan. The Jews the, always had um, a, a ritual cleansing. So for the forgiveness of sins to be cleansed from what they needed to be cleansed from, they would enter into the waters. And so there was the precedent already of, of using water and entering into the water to, to emerge new, to cleanse one's sins. So again, for this year, for Epiphany, to, to have the Genesis scripture in the beginning, God created heaven and earth and out of the chaos, the first thing he said to bring order was let there be light is just powerful. And then the second scripture reading is the baptism of Jesus. And, and it reminds me that if we are to do anything in this world to, to, to chase away the evil, to stand up to the evil, to make a new creation, then first it begins with us recognizing that we have to admit our our wrongs, our sins, we need to confess before we can do the work of God, we need to first confess. Confess to God whatever is in our hearts and then allow, allow the waters of baptism to cleanse us so that we can emerge with a new heart, with new eyes. I, I love the season of Epiphany, but this past Wednesday, on the celebration of the Feast of Epiphany, the message of this season became so powerful to me that there is work to be done. That if we have, are to have any order in chaos, that light needs to shine the God light, the Christ light within. If we are really to do work of healing the brokenness, then first we need to confess. Confess our part. And sometimes, and sometimes the biggest confession of our part in this broken world is the fact that the confession that we chose to look away. We chose to be quiet. We chose to, to turn a blind eye. We, we chose to say, I'm not, I'm not a, a white supremacist. We chose to say, I, I don't do that or feel that. I, I love all people, which is really not true. Come on. We all have, have someone we don't like. We come to the waters of baptism in Epiphany because that is when Jesus the Christ was revealed to those around him. What was revealed was his ministry. He he was without sin. Yes, he was without sin, but, but
but he went through the waters and he submerged himself and he emerged ready to do God's work, which once again just underscored the fact that before we can do anything, before we can really, really do anything to glorify God, that we must confess. January 6th. day of epiphany it was a day that we all witnessed how the darkness in this world is trying so hard to overtake the light but it was also a day that we if we really looked hard we could see Christ still working among us now, it doesn't seem like a huge, amazing thing, maybe, you know, a Mother Teresa moment. It's not. But for me, when I heard this story, it was an epiphany moment for me. You see, in the aftermath of, of those, I don't even know who to, what to call them, some say domestic terrorists is the right word. I was going to say those people. After they stormed the Capitol, they left a mess. They just left trash around. And there was a story in the, in, in the newspapers about the, um, the representative from New Jersey. His name is, oh my gosh, I have it here. His name is um, Andy Kim, Andy Kim. And he's the son of immigrant parents, it says. And he's, he became the first Asian American to represent New Jersey in Congress um, after he was elected in 2018. Well, anyway, there is a story about um, this gentle soul, <laughs> Andy Kim. One o'clock in the morning, he was in the um, in the building, quietly picking up the trash, picking up the garbage that was left behind. One o'clock in the morning, he wasn't doing it for a photo op. He wasn't doing it for publicity. He was just quietly picking up the mess. And he said, he said when, when he was asked why he was doing this, he said, when you see something you love that's broken, you want to fix it. I love the Capitol and I'm honored to be there. It really broke my heart and I just felt compelled to do something. What else could I do? And then afterwards, when he was contacted by the press, when word got out that, that he was doing this, that he picked up the trash, he, he said to the reporter, it's so hard because we don't look at each other and see each other as Americans first. Whether it's race or religion or political party that's getting in the way of us being able to have that shared identity that forge our country and is necessary for us to be able to continue. What is getting in the way of us of having a shared identity to, to do the work that needs to get done? So I ask if we have a shared identity as children of God if we, through the waters of baptism, hear God say, this is my beloved, you are my beloved, if we share the belovedness, if we share our identity as children of God, then what are we doing? How are we working to repair the world? Epiphany, January 6, 2021, was indeed an epiphany moment. The light shone on our darkness, on our brokenness. It made the Matthew scripture come to life. 
a dictator, a leader losing power, who's afraid, who's weak, lashes out with, with violence. And then we, like the wise men, are being asked to, to get back to our lives, but via a different path, a different perspective. And then, and then, epiphany, if you are to take the, the scripture that the, the Eastern Church holds on to with the baptism of Jesus, then it reminds us that before any good work can be done, that we all need to confess. William Sloan Coffin, he was, oh gosh, a, a, an activist, a, a preacher. He served at Riverside Church in New York City and then um, the Washington National Cathedral. And he wrote about baptism. He's like, baptism is a symbol of God's love. Baptism promises minimum protection. And, and, and I love that he says that baptism provides minimum protection because then we all know when, when parents say, oh, I have to get my baby baptized, you know, to protect my baby. He says baptism provides minimum protection, but it provides maximum support. And then William Sloan Coffin wrote, God doesn't want us to be safe, polite. God wants us to be fearless, joyful, and loving. God wants us to be responsible, response able, able to respond to love symbolized in baptism. Remembering always that love, among other things, requires the utmost and clear sightedness. God wants us to be creative, to repair a broken world, to empower the weak and scorn the powerful to bring forth justice to the nations as Isaiah saw and to work for peace as if the whole world depended on it, as indeed it does. Let baptized Christians remember the glory of God is a human being fully alive. On this epiphany, on this Epiphany Sunday, as we continue the season of Epiphany, let us be fully alive. Let us be fully, fully present. Let us, let us go forth now on a different path with a different perspective. Let us stand up to the evil. Let us realize that to bring, to bring order out of chaos, that the first thing we need to do is shine the light. Let us remember that to do the work of God, we too need to, to confess our sins. Let us remember that there is, there is nothing to fear. It might seem like we're living in crazy times, but if the promise of Advent and Christmas was about Emmanuel, God with us, and the promise of Epiphany is Christ is working among us just need to see. My friends, how are you going to see? The Pope gave an Epiphany um, sermon on Wednesday. And in his Epiphany sermon, he said there are three stages to growing in Christ. Three three stages in how we mature. It doesn't happen like that. You just don't say, hey, I believe, and all of a sudden, you know, you know you're a Christian. It, 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 it's a process. And so he said that the first is, the first step is to, to, to look up, to look up and really, really take in what's happening. Look up, look up and, and see the bright star in the sky. Look up and see the God moments, the God signs that are pointing us to the Christ. So the first step is to, to look up. And then the second step is to, to be willing to journey like the wise men. Be willing to journey. But then he said the, the last and the most important step, if we are to, to awaken to being God's beloveds, the last and important step is to really see. To really see. Wednesday, we were being asked to really see. 
who we are. But the good news is we can change. We can repair. We can, we can be Christ to one another. So this week, go forth, go forth and let your epiphany, your epiphany adventures continue. Go forth and see where you can see Christ among you. Thanks be to God. Sisters and brothers in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, God's Spirit has been poured out upon water, water poured over and immersing us, water that flows freely for all who will receive it, water that streams from God's saving power and justice, water that refreshes life, nurtures growth, and offers new birth. Today we come to the waters to renew our commitments to Christ who has raised us, to the Spirit who has birthed us, and to the Creator who is making all things new. And so I ask you, will you turn away from the powers of sin and death? Will you let the Spirit use you as prophets to the powers that be? Will you be living witnesses to the Gospel wherever you are and in all that you do? Will you receive and profess the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments? Almighty God, the life you birthed in us by baptism into Jesus Christ will never die. Your justice never fails. Your mercy is everlasting. Let these waters be to us drops of your mercy. Let these waters remind us of your righteousness and justice. Let these waters renew in us the resurrection power of Jesus. now a blessing of grace as we go out and begin a new week, a new week of seeing the epiphanies before us, a blessing of grace written by the Reverend William Sloan Coffin. May God give you the grace never to sell yourself short, grace to risk something big for something good, and grace to remember the world is now too dangerous for anything but the truth and too small for anything but love. Amen.